Just answering questions with WAPTEC. Regarding the fraud and some of your views on the election, I think that you're wrong on so many levels, but it's okay. I triple checked so my data and I clearly don't come to the same conclusions than you. I'm, I'll pass on that. Time might tell who's right or wrong. The truth will set us free. Okay. Uh, it's going on to a different subject here. That's acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the, this is the blind mice, not fallacy, but fact to see. <laughs> uh, we all observe the world in our narrow view of reality, um, point of view. Um, you know, we have a limited scope of experience. And that's normal. The thing is, is that I don't deal with just what I look up or retrieve or believe or view or whatever. No, this isn't any better. This is my way of figuring out whether or not I'm fooling myself. Is if the source for an accusation won't produce uh, something that can be double checked independently of them then they have to be a, a credible source of information. If someone says, I viewed something happening, like a massive fraud on a, on a scale that would affect an election, that is a contradiction in terms, because an individual is saying they've observed something independently, just themselves, that would affect an entire election, unless they are in a position to do so. And that's why you see the accusation that the election was rigged, based on people saying, I saw something systemically happening. And then when you check on it, Literally no one else sees it who has the same ability to view anything. No one even who is against the outcome finds it. Republican independent observers do not corroborate the statements of a couple of activists. There was a medical professional working at a hospital who had never been there before, who didn't like the procedures done in the area and didn't like being told, stop doing that, we need you to do something else when that's their damn job as a volunteer who showed up to help with COVID-19 patients, but they are listened to by certain people who want a certain outcome because they said, it's a scam, which is very vague and dumb. Another person, specifically a random person who's blocked me on Twitter, I found out today, decided to uh, make fun of a image of someone standing in a parking garage that was converted into a medical area because it needed to be. Ignore it. Let's all ignore it. Hundreds, if not thousands, of people who work at the hospital who confirm that's literally where p patients are being brought to. Well, it's obviously a fake ward, and that's all the person had to say. And Donald Trump retweeted it because Donald Trump will retweet anything desperately because he's constantly terrified of reality contradicting him. If you embrace lies, it proves that you're a coward. So my not-so-independent view of reality is attempted to be tempered, and poorly on my part, I admit, by looking at what the sources say on all of these subjects. If a person rigs the data to where I can't confirm or deny whether or not they were even in the place they said they were when they went out and recorded a UFO video, I can that shows me that they're trying to hide something and then I find out later where the location is after putting a lot of work into it I might add and find out that they were recording the only light source within 10 miles because it's a light directly over something that someone ran a wire to for power to put a light over something in the middle of the desert that's actually a video I did years ago it's a ring-shaped light it's because it was over a uh, power transformer or some other utility box I didn't know what it was but they failed to mention that, and they went out of their way not to point the camera in such a way that you could find out where it was, and would not tell anybody where it was. But they did a video later showing a sign saying, I was standing next to the sign. They didn't think that sign was going to be unique enough for me to find. I looked up what the sign said verbatim and found their location. And like, Google Street View was available because there is a dirt road out there that Google Street View went on somehow. That happens once in a while. And then off in the distance, there's a light post. And it and then there's a news story, the lonely light post out in the middle of, I forgot the name of the canyon or, or valley. And it's the only light for miles, and people find it all the time. So they actually did something weird. They put a very minor data communication hook up there on the pole and made it a cell phone spot so that people who were lost who found it could see a sign saying, this is your location, you have cell phone service here, and here's a phone. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. One of the most bizarre stories I had to go through, or maybe isn't it? I didn't mention what country it's in, but it's in the middle of a desert or valley of a desert-like area. 
Next, a statement from the same person here. Regarding the black background, your explanations are what they are. Some can surprise. It creates a style. I think that you sometimes share some interesting different perspective. A plurality of opinions is not a bad thing. Humility is not a bad thing either. Having more lighting could help to create a better human connection between you and your audience. And right now I'm experiencing the reason I do what I do in the video and hopefully you don't know why. <laughs> I'm more about the message than the form or the messenger, but I can help the message when there's more warm, friendly atmosphere. Since you debunk well or not some narratives, since you go against some narratives, I think that you're the this that that this opposite force that can look cold like some cold hard facts, true or false, in this day and age, would be helped by some light. The idea of bringing some truthful some truths fits the idea of going from darkness to light for good reason. And uh, someone pointed out a long time ago, very poetically, you appear to be standing in a dark cave, yet you're facing the light. I didn't put that in, in any videos, but I did think that was nice. But again, this is literally about, at one time, lowering bandwidth is the reason that the video is so low res. It makes it impossible for the computer to have the excuse of, oh, I need more bandwidth. No, you don't, computer. Shut up and do it. This is partially, you know, what I mentioned, but also part of this is bitch slapping my computer into not having an excuse to crash. I do not trust computers or systems of any kind. That includes our society and our civilization. It's fallen out from under me too many times. Part of what I am permanently is my inability to trust a system I've tested. Windows, Mac OS, the internet, society, the economy, even capitalism has failed me enough that I'm okay with adding in a couple of things, you know, like having the medical system not be based on capitalism. I don't know what else to base it on. I don't think the others will work, but some other damn thing, because it doesn't work. Our housing situation in this country has no reason to be like this, and leaving it up to the people who set the prices? No. Lots of things in this world knocked out from under me. Off on tangents again, aren't I? Some aspects of a representation, a presentation can be counterproductive. It's a shame when there's some value in the message. You express yourself well. I think that some of your message would be deserved to be heard beyond the fact that we agree or not with them. Thank you. I'd also like to point out that YouTube is censoring the shit out of me some more, and uh, I'm not shadow banned, but I'm deranked again, and etc. Hey, once you lose your 5,000 subscriber account, I love how it just, I mean, uh, I can confirm that people have experimentally tried to add me, you know, you know, subscribe and it doesn't change a subscriber account. So YouTube is meddling and shit again. Next one. Yes, one person needs to confer with the next and find some common ground. To start, my way is to say we are all of a single family. There is only one race of varying shades and tints. That simplifies it that much. Though lately I am hassled being I happen to be of the tinted type. That needs to be a t-shirt. Never have I had issues. There are families from two dozen nations that have moved here. And I am friendly to our transported kin known by their previous home locations. The Iranians, the Indians, the Koreans, the British, and the Chinese in my neighborhood. To name a few. Yet, a next door neighbor who happens to have the darkest tan this side of the neighborhood cusses me under his breath any time I see her. It is not like I speak to anyone in my neighborhood unless I have to, but the folks from out of this country will wave or wave back and actually smile. They don't know I am the summer and fall. I always have been something for them. They know in the summer and fall I always have something for them because I know a little about culture. I grew hot peppers and tobacco, and those gardens are good good for peace. But the next door neighbors, she has a lovely family and husband, very pale brown Scott. They're incredibly nice and good natured, but she hates me. Yeah. 
I don't understand how that can happen in this world. I don't know why it would happen. Here's another tangent. I grew up in a small town. I had one of the smallest classes and was stuck in it after being first grade, not kindergarten, first grade, being in a class with like 20 or 30 students. Some crazy number like that. It was so large it was split up. The next year, because I failed first grade, hey, yeah, go figure. Um, I was in a class of seven people total, me included. And only one person out of the class has a horrified reaction to me, like post-traumatic stress syndrome or post-dramatic st stress syndrome. And it's a girl who I won't name, so I can say this, who had a crush on me in high school and didn't tell me. Now, every one of you out there is thinking, oh, you're one of those guys who thinks everyone had... No, I mean, told me. I'm one of those guys that gets told years later, I had a crush on you two years ago. And if anybody's watching, no, I don't believe any of these people did. But this girl did. <laughs> and for the rest of her life, if she hears my voice or thinks about me, she has a negative reaction. Or she really did have a crush on me, but I'm not socially correct, not politically correct, socially correct for her to be attracted to at the time. Because I looked very different uh, from everybody else. Because I have a set of things that don't show up now, but it made me look a little unusual looking. Yes, I'm lowering the brightness to get rid of the background. And uh, the word mongoloid was used describing me by doctors. Uh, my face finished changing. And as you can see, I look like this, which I don't know if this is an improvement. <laughs> um, but apparently, very strong reaction to me. Always seemingly negative. Never could cite a reason for it. And of course, you must have done something terrible. No. Didn't. That's something I was told by this person. And now, negative reaction. And this has actually happened since then with other people. Some people become, just have an unwanted emotional reaction to you. Sometimes it's attraction, not just repulsion. And they flip their shit. Now, I'm not saying that's happening to you. Obviously, I'm going off on a tangent. Any strong reaction a person has, even a positive one, or just a memory of someone else related to it. I have another female friend. It's not just female friends, or male friends too. I have friends. Um, I have a female friend who has a negative reaction to me because I remind her very strongly of a very bad person she had in her family she couldn't get away from. That's a legit being triggered. That's a legit post-traumatic stress syndrome thing. So we don't have contact anymore because she's happier when she hasn't had a conversation with me. I cause negative reactions. B but I don't go near the girl who had a crush on me. But if you're stuck being neighbors with someone, you might want to leave a note saying, I understand that you don't like me. This note is being sent to you by mail, so I'm not intruding on your property. If you have a problem with me, you can write a letter and tell me what's wrong, and I'll try to correct it. But if I don't have the ability to correct it, I can't help you. That's what I would suggest. I'd also make sure that it was written in triplicate and had a lawyer involved so that there's no way for someone to lie about your communication with someone who's obviously antagonistic at that point. Now, how do I react to people like that on the internet? But today I got banned by Las Vegas Tours or something like that. Some website that's uh, run by somebody who's very angry with everybody and has decided COVID-19 is a lie. And um, didn't like the fact that there was a hospital that was set up in their garage of the hospital. And somehow that had to be fake all of a sudden. How do I address that? I don't. The person doesn't want to contact because they blocked me doesn't matter that they're completely fucking crazy or stupid or ideologically driven or whatever. I don't know what's going on with your neighbor. I'll never know what's going on with other people who don't like me either. I can't put the time into it. But in your situation, uh, you might want to plant some plants to block the view so she doesn't see you. I don't know how to fix it. What I would do isn't necessarily what you should do. Anyway, this has been me babbling on and on with two seemingly reasonable individuals. And also, tinted type should be a meme. That's a, that's, a, that's a good one. I like it. But yeah, I don't understand people who can't get along when everybody's trying to. I've never gotten that. Maybe that's why I'm a failure. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.